when the settlers first came over here, the Indians were paddling around and something to them looked like a log hauled out, and that's what it was. Some of the trees over here, when the settlers came, it would take three men with their arms outstretched to go around one. And said there was a lot of them were as much as 60, 70 feet in the air without a branch on them. Just, can you imagine that? Mm -mm. Log canoes have these origins both with Native Americans and probably also with African Americans. And sometime in the 19th century as well, we needed bigger boats than just what a dugout could produce. Or alternately, we ran out of those really giant trees uh, that could make a big log canoe. And we started joining logs together, side by side. So you can get a bigger boat if you join two logs together. And they said, well, if you can join two logs together and make a log canoe, why not three? and five. And so as the 19th century went on, we, we began to see these multiple log canoes. And one thing led to another until finally you got a beautiful boat out there that they still call a log canoe, but it don't look like a hog trough. <laughs> log canoes, of course, were built as work boats. And in the 19th century, that primarily meant oystering. And for a boat the size of a log canoe, that specifically meant tonguing for oysters with sometimes just a solitary waterman. The wonderful thing about a log canoe, they're so rugged, you can pile all the oysters in the bottom and shovel them back out. It's just one solid, rugged bottom, and it stood up to a lot of abuse. There are variations even around the Chesapeake in the way a log canoe is put together. And the northernmost variation of the log canoe is called the Tillman log canoe. Tillman is kind of the center of the area in which this style of log canoe originated. The most celebrated associated with log canoe building on Tillman is William Sidney Covington, who's active in the late 19th century. He builds a series of probably working canoes, but is most famous for these racing canoes. Well, my grandfather Sidney Covington built five of them. He was more or less a jack of all trades, I think. He was quite a gentleman. And everybody that knew him will never forget him. When he wanted to build a boat, and if it didn't, if somebody gave him a model to build and he didn't like looks of it, he wouldn't build it. <laughs> In 1882, Sid Covington builds a log canoe named Island Bird that is just for racing. Well, why would you do that? These watermen are starting to race their log canoes on the 4th of July and other, other holidays. Everybody likes a little competition. You know, th there's a competitive streak around here. If you're building a racing log canoe, as Sid Covington did, you can carve those logs a little thinner. You can shave them down and make this boat a little bit lighter. And he made a winning boat. Uh, and 10 years later, when he built the Island Blossom, Island Blossom became the dominant racing log canoe on the Chesapeake Bay. She was the boat to beat. 